So in the last video you have seen uh, why do we need to have different control structures in a programming language and in this lecture we will see how Python supports conditional control structures. So conditional control structure as we already discussed depending on the condition we need to choose one of the multiple paths in the flow of execution then we can use the conditional control structures and python supports all these uh, conditional control structure formats like you can use the simple if or then if else or even you can use if elif and else so let's try to understand how we can use these different kinds of conditional control structures in python so now let's try to understand how a simple if statement can be used to skip a set of instructions so here if you check this uh, flow of execution whenever the condition is true then I want to execute the statements in block 1 and uh, whenever the condition is false I want to skip the statements in block 1 and straight away I want to execute the statements in block 2. So to achieve these kind of control flow we can use a simple if structure the general form is if expression statements. Here if the expression is evaluated to true then only the statements that are placed inside that's if will be executed or otherwise whenever the expression is evaluated to false the statements that are placed inside the if would be skipped altogether and the statements that are placed after the if condition will be executed and you need to note that whatever the statements that you want to execute as part of the if you need to place them with a uniform indentation so here depending on the boolean expression so the statements will be either executed or skipped altogether. So now let's see an example of using the simple if structure. So assume that here marks is a variable which indicates a student marks. So if the marks are greater than or equal to 40, then I am giving the grade of the student as pass. So that is how whenever the condition is met, then to execute certain instructions, I can use the simple if structure. So consider another example. So assume temperature is a variable which indicates the temperature of the day then if the temperature is greater than or equal to 45 depending on that condition here the condition or the expression is temperature is greater than or equal to 45. Whenever that condition is evaluated to true then I am warning the people that do not go outside. So that is how we can use the conditional control structure to skip certain portion of instructions. That is how we can use the simple if structure to execute the statements whenever the condition is satisfied and whenever the condition is false then we can skip these set of instructions. But sometimes the simple if is not enough. In the previous example if you observe so whenever the condition is met then we are saying what to do but whenever the condition is not met then what to do you are not mentioning that right using the if else structure we can have two different paths of execution and if the condition is met do this if the condition is not met then do this so that kind of control flow can be achieved using the python if else structure so here if condition is true then the block one statements are executed whenever the condition is false then the block two statements are executed and after executing either of these two then the block three statements can be executed in python you can use this general form to achieve this kind of choosing one of the two possible ways of execution. The working of the if else structure is like this. First the expression is evaluated. If the expression is evaluated to true then statements in block 1 are executed and whenever the expression is evaluated to false then the statements placed in the else block would be executed. And here also you need to understand that the indentation has to be followed and the statements that are placed inside the if statement must be following the uniform indentation and similarly the statements placed in the else block if you have multiple statements then all of them should be given with the same indentation and consider this example how we can use this if else structure to choose one of the two possible ways of execution. So considering marks as the variable which indicates student marks. So if marks are greater than or equal to 40 then I am going to insert the set of statements that are to be executed when this condition is met and in the else part I can mention the set of statements which are to be executed when the condition is evaluated to false. What is the condition here marks is greater than or equal to 40. If the condition is true then what should be done and if the condition is false then what else should be done that you can say. So here my statements in the if block are grade equal to pass that is whenever the marks are greater than or equal to 40 then you are assigning the grade as pass. 
and whenever the marks are less than 40 then you are coming to the else block and you are evaluating the grade as fail that is how you can use the if else structure to choose one of the two possible paths but can we have multiple paths of execution that is more than two paths of execution and is it possible to choose one of the possible path of course yes so python supports if elif else structure to choose one of the multiple paths of execution so if you consider this uh, flow of execution so condition one if this condition is true then i am going to execute the statements on block one and whenever the condition is evaluated to false then i am going to check another condition so if this condition is true then i am going to execute the statements in block two and whenever the second condition is false again i am choosing the statements in block three and after executing here if you observe the condition is one is true then block one statements are executed whenever the condition true is true then block two then condition two and one both are false then that indicates that the condition three statements are executed so that is how you are choosing one of the possible paths of execution any point in time here either block one or block two or block three statements are executed never more than one this can be extended to multiple levels and at any point in time only one of the possible ways will be selected then after executing any of these paths then finally so you can proceed with the common path again now let's see how python supports us to choose one of the multiple paths by using this if elif and the el structure so here if you observe the general form if expression one then you can have the set of statements in that gap and then you are having the second expression also the second condition so elif as part of the elif block and you can have the set of statements over there then else then the other set of instructions so if you observe when the expression one is evaluated true then block one statements would be executed so otherwise if the statement expression one is evaluated to false and the expression two is evaluated to true then block two statements are executed and whenever that condition the expression two is also evaluated to false then the statements part of else are executed that is block three is executed so if expression one is true then block one if expression one is false and expression two is true then block two if expression one and expression two are false then you are coming to the else block the statements in block three are executed so that is how you can use if elif else structure to choose one of the three possible paths now let's have an example assume marks is a variable which indicates a student marks so here i am going to have the condition as marks is less than 40 so then that is one condition or otherwise whenever that condition is false then i am going to have a condition as elif marks is greater than or equal to 40 and marks is less than 60 that is if the students score less than 40 they are going to one bin and the students scored between 40 and 60 they are going to another bin and whoever scores more than 60 they are going to into the other bin i hope you know what are the grades that you will get depending on the bins so whenever the marks are less than 40 grade is fail and whenever the marks are between the range 40 and 60 then the student scores second class and if the student scores more than 60 marks then his grade would be first class right this is how you can choose one of the multiple paths here if you observe we are giving three options but any point in time the student will get either of these grades not more than one right either he is fail or he gets second class or otherwise he gets a first class right so that's how you can use the conditional control structures to select one of the possible paths of execution and you need to observe one more thing after executing either block one block two or block three statements all these cases finally the statements after the else would be executed this happens irrespective of the block you are choosing so so far we have seen so how if elif else structure or the simple if or the if else structure can be used either to skip the statement or to choose one of the possible paths of execution so either you can skip the set of statements or you can choose one of the possible paths of execution right and can we have 
one if-else structure as part of the other if-else structure. So, Python supports nested if structure which allows us to have one if-else structure or the simple if structure as part of the other if or the else structure. So, if you consider this block, so the condition is either true or false. So, I can have the statement blocks, right? So, instead of having the simple statement blocks, what I can do is I can have the if-else structure itself. If the condition is true, I can have uh, an if-else structure or even if the condition is false also, I can have the if-else structure. So, if you can have such kind of conditional control structure, then such conditional control structure is known as the nested if structure. So, because you are having one uh, if-else structure as part of the other conditional control structure, right? So, such structures are known as the nested control structures. So, now let us see. So, here instead of having the simple statements, I am going to have the if-else structure and it need not to be complete if-else structure. You can have the simple if also or you need not to have uh, in both true and false, either you can have in the true block or in the false block also. It is up to you. But it supports to have a conditional structure as part of the and the conditional structure. So, now let us see the general form. So, here if expression 1 is evaluated to true, then you are going to have a complete if-else structure as part of the if block. And whenever the expression 1 is evaluated to false, then the control falls to the else block, right? And in that case also, I am going to have another if-else block the complete if-else structure as part of the else block. So, this is how you can have an if-else structure nested as part of the other if-else structure. So, now let us see this example how we can use a nested if structure. The same old uh, grading of the student example I will take, but in addition to grading of the student, I want to check whether the student participated in any kind of malpractice or not. So, if the student participated in the malpractice, will not be releasing the grade, will be withholding the student, right? So, consider this uh, if else structure, the outer if else structure. If marks of the student is less than 40, then I will be placing a set of statements there. And if the student scores greater than or equal to 40, then another set of statements would come here in the else block, right? So, here if you observe, I am placing one complete if else structure as part of the if block. So, what I am doing there is whenever the student scores less than 40 marks, I am again checking if malpractice is true or not. Has he participated in malpractice or not? If so, then the grade will be assigned as withheld, otherwise, the student grade is released as fail. Or otherwise, whenever the student scores more than or equal to 40 marks, in that case also again, I need to check the student participated in malpractice or not. So, if he participates malpractice, then even if he scores more than 40 also, I need to withheld his marks, right? So, the grade will be assigned to withheld. If so, otherwise, I will be releasing the grade as pass. And finally, in whatever the case it is, finally, I will be displaying his grade right so either that block or this block will be executed and finally the grade of the student will be released so that's how we can use the if else structure so now let's see how we can use the compact form of the if else structure so python supports us to have a compact or the short form of the if else structure so what happens is if you use this compact form of if else structure it simplifies the code it reduces the code size other than that working of the if else structure is the same so if you consider the regular form is this so if expression then statement then else block then again the statement block 2 right so that can be written that four set of statements can be written shortly in a single line so here you can observe variable equal to statement if expression else statement 2 so here what happens is so in the if the expression is evaluated first and whatever the statements that should appear as part of the if statement that should be prepended to the if keyword here if you observe the statement one is placed before the if keyword whatever is placed as part of the else block so that should be placed after the else block so statement two that's how it's placed after the else and as a result whatever uh, the statement that is executed finally that value will be assigned to the variable. So, this is how we can use a short form of the uh, if else structure to reduce the code size other than that. So, both will execute in the same manner. So, let us see an example of using the short form of the if else structure. If marks are greater than or equal to 40 then grade is pass else grade is fail. So, that is how regular uh, the regular if else structure can be written. So, let us see how we can uh, convert this to the compact form. 
So here, if marks are greater than or equal to 40, the condition is as you, as it is. But so whatever is part of the if block, so that should be placed before the if keyword. That's why the pass is placed before the if keyword. And whatever comes as part of the else part, so that has to be placed after the else block. And finally, the value is assigned to the variable, and I'm using the grade as a variable. So that's how you can convert the regular form of if-else structure to the short forms. So, so far in this lecture, we have discussed uh, various conditional control structures that are supported by Python. So, depending on the condition, how we can skip the set of statements or depending on the condition, how we can execute a set of statements or otherwise, how it is possible to choose one of the possible flows of execution among the multiple paths. And in addition to that, we have seen the nested if structure where we can place one if-else structure as part of the other if-else structure. Now I hope you understand how you can use various conditional control structures in Python to achieve the decision making capabilities in your programming. Thank you, thank you for watching this video.